Okay, hi, I'm gonna talk to you now about Alicia Has a Bad Day. So this was my very first book that was written and illustrated by me. It came out a really long time ago. You can see the art is kind of rough and sloppy, as is my style. Um, I dedicated it to Jack Antos and my grandfather. So there were two people. Jack Antos was a mentor of mine when I was in grad school and my grandfather was also a mentor of mine because he paid for me to go to grad school. So lucky me. Um, and this story is somewhat autobiographical. It's about a girl who has a bad day. I thought everyone could relate to that. Before this version came out, I did a lot of other versions. I began this with a character. Um, the first time I wrote about Alicia was in a little tiny book that I had bound with a little plastic binding called Alicia and her happy way of life. And it, uh, there's really no story to it. It's all about Alicia and the things that she likes to do. She likes to uh, look, turn cartwheels, and she likes to look at the moon. Um, there she is looking at the moon. She has friends, and she likes to play with them. Sometimes she has an idea in her head, and she can't get it out, so she draws a picture. That was my idea of a plot, um, how to get this idea down. And there are some pe people, her friends, that she loves. It was really all about everything that she loved to do and it ended with um no, 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 no. i love being with my people we're all so special and uh i am um, i'm a happy person um so yeah that was alicia and her happy way of life i was 22 or 21 or something i was out of college kind of my gap year between college and grad school when i did this little book uh, a friend of mine said that's a fun book but it's really kind of uncannily happy and that nobody could be happy all the time and I thought about that very thing this friend of mine named Matt who I've known since I was in grade school he said nobody can be happy all the time are you happy all the time and I said no I am one of the most miserable people I know and he said exactly so I took that to heart and I thought well what would happen if Alicia had a bad day. So the next version I wrote and so black and white illustrations. And again, I had it bound with a plastic binding and I used to sell these in bookstores back in the, I don't even want to tell you, a long, 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 long time ago before, before the internet, before it was easy to self-publish and all of that. Um, I would trot into bookstores and sell these. They're like little cards. They're sort of fun. You can even put in an envelope and sell them. So this was the version where I thought, what would happen if Alicia had a bad day? Um, I continued on with these books. I went to graduate school and I wrote Alicia's Evil Side, which I think was a little bit indicative of I don't know, moving to Boston and being 21 and I am confused with my life. Um, and some very, she does some very mean things here. She, uh, she sometimes has a very, 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 very bad day where she actually goes around and, uh, you know, takes a present back from a friend, um, wrecks their picnic at one point. Um, and then the final blow, there she pulls the tops off of all of the daisies. Uh, so she's not having a good day here. Uh, then I did another one called My Happy Birthday Book, which again is kind of like my happy way of life, except that she has a reason to be happy. So she wonders what the day is. And, you know, there's no other day like today. Everyone is extra nice to me. They smile and give me presents. This one actually was made into a book. Um, this one and Alicia. So this was on my shelf. Um, this one was made into a little, into a little book. Uh, again, kind of a small book, more of a gifty book. Um, and it is all about celebrating. Alicia puts on her crown. She blows bubbles. Uh, she toots her horn, she leads a parade, and you don't know it's her birthday, you know, there's a yummy cake, and then she blows out all the candles, and then finally it says today is my birthday, yay. So you kind of know it is her birthday, but there's a slight little like reason to turn the page, but there's not much of a story here. She sings and she celebrates. Uh, so I have these four little books, birthday book, evil side, bad day, happy way of life. Um, and I tried it around to different editors when you could make appointments with editors and 
show them your work or show them ideas. I thought, you know, I, I didn't want to go into bookstores and try to sell these like gift cards anymore. Even though I had mild success. Some people bought them, which was really cool. They, cause like I said, they're kind of fun little gifty cards. And I got a lot of rejections, tons of rejections. Finally, I met up with an editor, Walter Lorraine at Houghton Mifflin, who was kind of a grumpy person himself. And although a great editor, I mean, I owe everything. I owe who I am as a, a writer. Um, and an illustrator and a book person and a teacher to Walter Lorraine and to my mentor in grad school, Jack Canto. So between the two of them, they've like shaped me and a lot of my teaching comes out in stuff that they've, I've learned through them. So Walter Lorraine, I was sitting in his office. He said, oh, these are too much like cards. Um, I don't think I can publish them. And then I said, well, I want to make them bigger and different and I want them to be a book. And he said, okay. And he said, well, nobody's going to care about someone who's happy all the time. Exactly what my friend said. Um, and then he said, Alicia's evil side is really, really, really too dark. You know, it's a, even the word evil is, he, he would not, he said he would not publish a book with the word evil in it. I kind of get that. It's, it's a little weird word. Um, birthday book, he said, yeah, that's sort of fun. But at the, that time, he said, we don't need another birthday book in the world. It took about six years, and then he said, okay, we'll do it. But then he picked up this one, and he said, okay, bad day. Everybody has a bad day, and what does Alicia do on her bad day? Let's see what happens. And he read through this book. I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to read you a couple different versions because it does change. Um, Hello, my name is Alicia. I am generally a happy person. I don't have this one quite memorized, but not always, believe it or not, there are times when I am rather miserable. And she's standing in a corner. Uh, on those days when I am rather miserable, I don't want to get out of bed. Eventually, I do get up, but all I can do, oh no, wait. Eventually, I do get up and fix myself some toast to eat, but I am still miserable. After toast, I sit and mope. You can see how little stick figure, you know, my art was. I did not think I was going to be an illustrator at this point. After I mope, I lie on the floor and stare at the ceiling. The cracks make faces. Then I play music very loud and I dance very fast. And when I can't boogie anymore, I stand on my head and I listen to my heartbeat. Oh, I stand on my head and meditate on my heart beating. Um, words like boogie and meditate, I ended up cutting those. They didn't make sense. Finally, I decide something must be done. I grab my notebook and a pen and venture outside. I ended up cutting the word venture too. It didn't make sense. Sometimes a simple word is the best word. I walk into the woods, stepping on anthills as I go. Ha. I sit down on a stump and I write the word lugubrious in my notebook. Okay, so now that is a large word, lugubrious. And one of the reasons I changed some of the other words like meditate and venture and boogie was because I wanted everything to center around lugubrious. Lugubrious come, comes from a poem. Well, for me, it came from a poem that I was reading um, on a rainy day. And it's a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow called A Rainy Day. And it has the word lugubrious in it. And it talks about my heart being, the day being dark and dreary and my heart being oh so weary. It's a favorite poem of mine. And I love the word lugubrious. I just think that's a beautiful sounding word. It conjures up misery and it's fun to say. So I wanted to put it in a book and it's, Alicia writes it in her notebook. But the next page, it does tell you what it means. Lugubrious is my favorite miserable word. It means dark and dreary. It is dark and dreary in my heart. And I wanted this page to convey the darkness and the dreariness of her emotional state, not necessarily the physical state, but the feeling she has of being small. Being miserable is exhausting, so I fall asleep. This is where it definitely gets autobiographical. While sleeping, also it gets a little weird. While sleeping, I dream of flying to a castle in the air. In the castle, there are great festivities going on. They put a crown on my head and everyone laughs and dances. 
When I dance, I turn a cartwheel and everyone cheers. So she's sort of the center of her own universe here. I guess this is a little bit like the birthday book. When it is time to go, we wave goodbye. They let me keep the crown. So this is all her dream, remember? Um, I wake up from my dream. I pick some beautiful, fresh flowers and do a little happy dance all the way home. Da 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 da. So that is the end of this version of Alicia Has a Bad Day. Uh, the ending is, well, I'll tell you what my end editor said. He said he liked this book. He thought having a bad day was gr a great idea for a kid. Um, he loved the word lugubrious. He loved that she fell asleep. He was like, oh man, everybody relates to that. Falling asleep, lugubrious, dark darkness. Um, and then he said, well, this part, this ending sucks. And he literally said those words. This ending sucks. Going to a dream is a cop-out ending and it does not work. And he pointed it out to me, or he explained it to me this way. He said, say you're a kid, you're having a bad day. And you pick up this book, Alicia Has a Bad Day, because you want to, you relate to it and you want to see what Alicia does. Does she get out of her bad day? How does she get out of her bad day? Is there anything that you might learn from Alicia and maybe mimic her experiences or learn to not mimic her experiences. Um, you know, how does she do it? And how does she do it? She happens, well, she falls asleep and then she just by chance happens to have a really great dream. And this dream is so wonderful that it causes her to wake up and feel happy. And, and then I had this sort of strange idea that in the picture, you know, she's still wearing the crown. So you're supposed to kind of wonder, you know, was it really a dream or maybe it really happened? I don't know. She has the crown from the dream. and But, you know, that, that was sort of a lost kind of illustration uh, extra, you know, it didn't really work. And I did take that to heart. I thought that is a cop out of an ending, a dream ending doesn't make sense if you have a really serious story about a bad day. And what are the chances that someone's gonna have a bad day, fall asleep, and then suddenly have a really great dream? I mean, first of all, if you're having a bad day, you're probably gonna have a bad dream, so that doesn't make sense, and that that would make you happy. Um, so he said, the story was really great, but the ending sucked. He said, why don't you make it bigger? I'm interested in your art. Make your art bigger, keep it fresh, keep it childlike. Um, see what you can do with the ending and I'll look at it again. So this is when I went and learned all about the um, 16 page turns and you know the 32 page format. Um, so I made a dummy book, this is the first dummy book I ever made. I made it look as much like a book as I could. Um, this cover is separate, you can see that, it's taped together. I even made two signatures, it's a little broken now but um, you know, these were the two signatures. Um, this is the first 16 pages, second 16 pages. I even sewed them together with a needle and thread. I just wanted to make it all work. Um, title page, Alicia has a bad day. And um, you can see what happens. Um, my name is Alicia. I am generally a very happy person, but not always. Some days I am miserable. And you can see I have little notes here when I'm, I'm working on it, little post-it notes. Um, today is one of those days I am so miserable I don't want to get out of bed and I changed it from any day you know on those days to this day you know today is always better you know to make it a specific day rather than every day because then the story is now it's today. Um, uh, eventually I get up I make myself some toast to eat so now she goes through the series of activities to try to you know make herself better. I sit on my chair and I mope. Um, I lie on the floor. I stare at the ceiling. The cracks make faces at me. And now instead of the cracks making faces, they're making them at me. It's much more specific. That's stolen from Madeline, by the way. Madeline lies on the floor and the ceiling, the cracks on the ceiling have a habit of looking like a rabbit. Um, then I play music very loud. I dance very fast. I sit on my head. I meditate. Um, nope, she doesn't meditate. I can't boogie anymore. I stand on my head and listen to my heartbeat, but I am still miserable. Finally, I grab my, uh, pencil and a notebook and I venture outside. And again, I went from pen to pencil. Finally, I ended up with a crayon, which makes a lot more sense. 
for Alicia. Um, I walk into the woods, stepping on antels as I go. Ha! I sit down on a stump. I write the word lugubrious in my notebook. So these are all the same. Then I have, you know, lugubrious is my favorite miserable word. It means dark and dreary. Dark and dreary in my heart. She feels very small. Being miserable is exhausting, so I fall asleep. And again, my editor said he really liked this idea. So I kept it there. And then, instead of a dream, when I wake up, a big gray cloud has covered the sun. Uh, it's cold, and there are ants crawling up my cheek. I am even more miserable. So we get a big close-up of her face. Um, goes right from sleeping to waking. On my way home, I trip, and my notebook lands in a gooey mud puddle, so bad things are happening to her. I run upstairs. I am miserable, I shout. I am going back to bed. I pull the covers over my head. Suddenly, I feel a little better. So my theory, my idea here was that by the the fact that she's announcing that she's miserable out loud to the world is enough to kind of start to make her feel a little bit better. Um, and I, yeah, at some point I wanted, I gave her a turtle. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little picture of her. I gave her a little stuffed animal thing. Um, so then the last page, tomorrow I think I will have waffles for breakfast. So again, she's not totally out of her bad day, but she's kind of going to get there. That's the hint. And that she's now not dreaming, but she's fantasizing about tomorrow being a better day. And this, I, if you know this, the book, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day is kind of a classic. And in that book, he has a really wretched day. And in the very end, his day stays wretched, but he's thinking tomorrow is going to be better. Um, that was my theory here, that her ability to announce that she's miserable was enough to enable her to think about tomorrow being better. And today was just suck it up. You know, some days suck. Um, and my editor thought this was a lot better but still not good enough. And he did offer me a contract with this one, which was super exciting. Um, and he said, you still gotta make the ending better. And you still gotta refine your art a little bit more. And what about having another character? He said, what about, you know, it's really hard to have a story where a girl's by herself the whole time. And, you know, nothing is making her better, really. Nothing she does. And I tried to convince him. I said, well, she's announcing that she's miserable. And he said, well, it's in the first person present tense. She's kind of telling us that she's miserable right from the beginning anyway. So that, he didn't buy it. He didn't buy, he didn't buy my justification. My justification was just trying to convince him. And he, he was right. So then I went and I did all of the storyboards. Um, I want to show you a couple. Uh, let's see, this is um, that's the third. This is this is one that I did. Uh, all right, this is one of the first ones I did. So you know, I had I, I, I divided it up into sixteen page turns, and as we've talked about, each one of these squares represents a double spread. So you can see here, Alicia's happy. Here she's not or some days she's miserable here she is in bed here she is eating toast here she is in her chair here she is lying on the floor here she is dancing meditating on her heart um, going outside here she is stepping on antils sitting on a stump writing the word lugubrious there she's feeling miserable tight of the you know climax there she is falling asleep there she is running oh no waking up with the ants crawling on her cheek, there she is tripping, and there she is announcing, she, there she is thinking about waffles. Uh, that was a storyboard I did. I decided to get rid of the waffles, and another, there's another storyboard I did. So this one, I don't know if you can see any difference, but so you see how that middle page, uh, that dark page is kind of near the end there. And in this one, you can see the dark page is a little bit, ha happens a little bit sooner. And there's another double spread down here where there's some darkness. And there's another double spread here. So this one had this nice pattern, mostly, of a picture, you know, of a text, and then a picture, text, and then picture, text, and then picture. And this one, I broke it up a little bit more. And uh, you can see, see, well, I guess you can't quite see there. It's cut off, but that's her in the beginning. And the big change here 
you can't really tell. Maybe you can tell in this, um, oh shoot. Sorry, I've just uh, lost my image here. I'm going on too long. I'm gonna read you, I'm gonna read you the final version and talk to you about that. Uh, um, see, all right, there I am. Um, and then I may, and then I'll show you these again. So this is the version that came out, it's a paperback. Uh, this book came out in 1994. It is still in print. It is by far my biggest seller. This book and my friend and I and Little Dog. There's the title page. And this is the first page. Hello, my name is Alicia. This is my dog, Neptune. I am generally a very happy person. So the biggest change here from the original version is that she has a dog. And now she has something to sort of bounce uh, her day off of. Um, but not always, some days, I am miserable. Today, I am so miserable, I don't want to get out of bed. Neptune doesn't even lick my face like he usually does. So this page is setting up everything for the ending. Like he usually does, which means he didn't today. Something is off with today. Something that usually happens did not happen today, which could be a hint that this is why today is a bum day. Uh, also, you can see in the picture something that is not in the text. And because this is first person present tense, Alicia doesn't see it. She doesn't say, I don't know it, but there's a dog under my bed and this is Neptune. The reader has to notice what is under the bed and keep it in the back of their mind throughout the entire book. Because Neptune doesn't appear much after that because he's under the bed the whole time, which might be why she's having a bad day. So eventually I do get up, but all I can do is sit and mope. So she doesn't make toast. I needed to cut out one of these examples of the things that she does because it wouldn't fit into the page turn. And I cut out the toast because it seemed odd that a young girl would be making toast unsupervised. Even though I like toast, Alicia is not capable of doing that on her own. Uh, after I mope, I lie on the floor and stare at the ceiling. The cracks make faces at me. Then I play music very loud. I stand on my head. I listen to my heartbeat, but I am still miserable. And this page kind of moves, you know, the movement from dancing into standing on her head. Finally, I grab my notebook and my red crayon and go outside. And there's hints here, like the sun is not happy and the cloud is coming, a big gray cloud, which does show up later. I walk into the woods, stepping on anthills as I go. Ha! Uh, that's still the cruel thing she does. I sit down on a stump. I write the word lugubrious in my notebook. That's the same. Lugubrious is my favorite miserable word. It means dark and dreary. It is dark and dreary in my heart. And I love seeing this book for the first time. You couldn't do this in 1994. Um, was to have reverse type here where you have the page black and the type white. Very cool. A big gray cloud covers the sun. It starts to rain and ants crawl up my cheek. So what has what is not here? Wait, what are we missing that was in the other two versions? Right, the falling asleep. So now I cut out the sleeping altogether and I decided to do that even though my editor said he kind of liked that idea. It just didn't fit and it didn't make sense. She should stay awake the entire book so that we can follow her and what she does. So she goes right from feeling very small to a big whammo, you know, close up of her face with ants. And I also like the dramatic page turn of small, dark, you know, black background to, you know, her big white face, which is really white because it's the color of the page and I didn't want to paint a skin color. I just wanted her to have like a, almost like invisible, I don't know. It was a weird decision, but that's what I did. Uh, so a big gray cloud covers the sun. It starts to rain and ants crawl up my cheeks. So perhaps they're getting their revenge. On my way home, I trip and land in a gooey, wet, sticky mud puddle. Grr. 
So she's entirely soaked, wet, miserable. I run upstairs, I shout as loud as I can, I am miserable. So she still does say that, but it's not the thing that actually helps her to have a better day. So she's running upstairs on her bed. I crawl to the darkest, dreariest place I know, under my bed. And remember the word lugubrious means dark and dreary. So she's crawling to the darkest, dreariest place. And what do you see under her bed? That she doesn't see yet, but you see it because you're reading the pictures. And it's over here, in case you didn't see. Is she going to see it? You have to turn the page to find out. I feel something soft and warm. It's Neptune and he licks my face, which is exactly what he didn't do way back here. So this page sets up for this page. So the first third page sets up for the second. And then this is basically the happy ending. I'm sorry, don't look at that. That was a mistake. This is supposed to be like uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's a spot that nobody really can figure out, but it's supposed to be two moons kind of looking at each other that represent the moons on her bed. But everybody thinks it's Neptune because your eye goes to this color in the middle, which is the same color as Neptune. And I, I just would do something different there. But I liked having a spot on those pages, you know, just to have something besides blank, blank text. So on the pages that aren't double spreads, I would put a little spot, but this was that was a mistake. So the last page sums everything up. Neptune and I go outside to play and the world is a lot less lugubrious. And that's the end. And I do always read this differently because if I were to rewrite this now, I would say Neptune and I go out to, to play instead of we. And I would say a lot less instead of a little less. I think when I was younger, when I wrote this, I wasn't ready to give in to a like, yes, this is really a good day. It's a lot less lugubrious. I was like, yeah, okay, it's a little less. But now I'd be like, sure, go for it. Um, but I can do that when I read it out loud. But otherwise, nobody really seems to, nobody else notices. So that's the versions I went through. You can see how the end changed, how the storyboards have helped. Um, here is a really nice storyboard where you just have the pictures and this is where you can see, you know, the spreading out and the double spreads there, even the dancing, um, the dark page there, the under the bed page there. And uh, what else can you see? Oh, yeah, the dark page and then the close up page right after it. So thank you very much for listening to me. Sorry, this is a little long and uh, forgive the middle that got a little sloppy and hopefully you learned something about writing picture books. And if you look at the novel writing video, I talk a little bit about how I use this storyboard technique to write um, a couple of my novels, certainly my, my last novel. All right, see you later. Thanks for listening. Bye.